Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 67 of Photo Critiques. And in Photo Critiques, people send me in some of their best images and I critique each shot with suggestions on how they can improve it. And today I'm pleased to critique the work of Crystal Whalen. Crystal sent me in some really nice images. She tells me that she's been into photography for less than a year. She really uh, enjoys it and really enjoys nature shots. So let's see if we could help her with her photography. In this first shot, a very interesting shot, found a natural pattern in nature of these mushroom caps. Very cool leading line. Um, in this case, it looks like the conditions were overcast and when you have those type of conditions, the light's going to be very flat, so you're not going to have a lot of contrast in your shot. Also, the colors are going to be very muted. So hopefully when you do this, you shoot in raw, because then in post-processing you could bring out some of the um, colors that are inherent in the scene and add some contrast that um, wasn't so readily apparent because the light was so flat. And so in this case, um, even though it's a JPEG, I could adjust it a little bit. I'd bring the highlights up a little bit. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want the white mushroom cap caps to stand out more against the green foliage. So I'd bring the highlights up. I'd um, add some clarity, which will further uh, enhance the white uh, mushroom caps. And of course, then I'd add some contrast. Now also, because the colors are muted, I would add some vibrance to the shot also. And that helps, you know, us see the varying shades of green that are inherent in the scene. So this is before and this is after. So, you know, hopefully I tried to sh exploit the leading lines of the mushrooms. Now, the other thing is, it looks like you shot, you shot standing up, shooting straight down on it. In a scene, when you get a nice leading line like this, sometimes it's better if you get down low what happens when you get down low this leading line will look like it's going off into infinity and it helps better define your shot so I would suggest when you get a scene like this by all means take a shot just like you did but then get get you know down stoop down so you're shooting more um, parallel to the ground and this um, mushroom area would look like it would be going off into infinity it's a interesting shot it's a kind of a busy scene. This is always very, very difficult to photograph. I think what Crystal was going for was to get the moss that is in this pile of tree trunks and tree, you know, brush. Because it's so busy, though, our eye has a hard time resolving on something of interest, so our eye is searching around. So keep that in mind. Usually, not always, but usually when you photograph something, you want something that's a definitive point of interest, something that our eyes will resolve after we kind of look through the photograph. In this case we have a lot of different elements. We have the sky, background trees, a fence, a hillside, you know, dead wood, you know, a lot of weeds growing up around it, so it's really busy. I think in this case if you work the scene, got in really close and maybe just really shot like a very small area and really made the moss the star of the show. I think it would have been a stronger image. This is a case too where it's very hard to capture what you wanted to capture. You have this really graphic looking uh, dead tree trunk you know laying on the ground. Unfortunately it's so long that to back up far enough to get it entirely in the frame you introduce all these other elements that don't necessarily add to the shot. So it's really a hard subject to photograph. Again, in this case, I think you would have been better off if you got just really close and just shot right in here where the wood is all broken and rotted and different. You could have, um, your photograph would have shown the different shades of colors that are in, in here, the graphic nature of the wood that is rotting away. I think that would have been a stronger shot. This Now, this case, you took a really low angle, which is nice, and there's some out-of-focus foreground elements, which is okay. Um, the thing is, the subject, though, is kind of facing away from us, isn't it? This The mushrooms are actually facing that way. So I think in this one you might have been better served if you went around 180 degrees and did the same type of shot shooting this way. And maybe even got a little closer. It might have been a stronger shot. This, um, I don't know what they, I forgot what they call these. These I don't think are technically mushrooms that grow at the base of a tree. 
forgot what they call uh, bracket fungi or some bracket fungus. I don't remember. Anyways, um, in my younger day, I was really into nature and I knew all this stuff. But now I'm old and I'm forgetful. This is a very nice shot. I think you may have got it just a tiny bit closer, just a little bit if your focus, your um, lens would have allowed you to focus just a little bit closer. And the uh, colors are very nice. The focus is a little soft. It's just a little soft. It's not really anything in the shot that is in super, super tight focus. And if you don't already, I would encourage you to use back button focusing and single point focusing. In single point focusing, you're setting your camera up so that only one small point in when you view through the viewfinder is going to be the focus point and you'll be able to move that around so you could move it to here if you want this to be in perfect focus or here to be in perfect focus and the advantage of back button focusing there's really a lot of advantages and every pro that I've that I've known uses back button focusing none of them use focusing with the shutter button and all the cameras you buy default so that your shutter button focuses when you push halfway that is clumsy when you really want to uh, do some creative photography so I have an article on my website something like four reasons why you don't want to sh focus with the shutter button something like that's the title just go to my website and search for back button focusing and I um, outline four reasons and advantages to back button focusing and why you would want to do it. So that means that you remove the focus responsibilities from your shutter button and you bring them to a button on the back of your camera. And it's a lot easier and faster to grab a focus point when you do it that way. Then, So you could actually tilt your camera to the right, let's say, and focus, put your single point focus point right on this. And you could hit your back button, focus right there then tilt your camera back towards the middle and hit the shutter button to take the shot and that your camera won't try to grab focus again because the shutter button doesn't affect focus anymore now in this case I wouldn't suggest doing that but there's a lot of instances where you would want to do that you might um, have a bird on you know a, a power line let's say you don't want to bullseye it. You don't want them right in the middle. And you happen to have your focus point right in the middle of your um, viewfinder. Now, if that bird was going to stay there, you knew that bird wasn't going to move, you could move your focus point with a button on the back of your camera to the right, let's say. The bird is facing to the left. So you could move it right over the bird's eye, hit your back button to focus, then hit your shutter button to take the shot. But what's faster, because that bird might fly off at any minute, you have that focus point right here. Just turn your camera to the bird's eye, put the focus point right over the bird's eye, focus with the back button, spin your camera back around to recompose so the bird is to the right now, and hit your shutter button and take the shot. That is a lot faster, a lot more efficient. So consider using back button focusing and consider using single point focusing. So you're really take control of where your camera is going to grab focus. This is uh, one of those isolation shots. These are some of my favorite type of shots. In this case, um, it's a little soft. When you do these um, isolation shots, you really have to be careful that you have perfect tight focus on the thing you're isolating. And typically you do want to use a wide aperture and it looks like you used the widest aperture you could at 30 millimeters so you did a great job the other element here is these foreground elements I often mention that when you have autofocus foreground elements sometimes they work sometimes they don't and you'll never know unless you take the shot in this case I think they distract from the loneliness that we're trying to convey of this lone mushroom out in you know the the field so I might have matted these down to get them out of the frame or took a different angle where they were minimized. Definitely this one here I'd get out of there. It looks like it's just a dead stick so I think you could have just pulled that out of the, the picture. Um, also you might not want it right in the middle either off to the side. That's where the uh, back button focusing comes in handy. Single point focusing comes in really handy. So because if you didn't use single point focusing and you had it over here and you just hit your shutter button, 
your uh, camera likely would take focus on something back here, not on this. So I'd have it more to the right or to the left. I'd eliminate and try to minimize any foreground elements that are distracting from it. And I'd use single point focusing to focus right, right there. So it's in super tight focus. This here, a very nice idea. Again, though, this one is really out of focus. So single point focusing, I keep saying it. You guys are getting mad at me because I'm saying it so much. I, I can't stress it enough. Use single point focusing, back button focusing. Really, I, I don't know of a pro that does not do that. So um, really check into it. As I mentioned, go to my website and search for back button focusing, and I talk about it. This, uh, again, uh, this is a really nice shot in that you're very low, you know, shooting along. Um, very good focus right here. Very, very good focus right there. This mushroom, though, I think is really the star of the show, not this kind of dead piece of wood here. Uh, I This is another one I'd work the scene. I'd try to get this mushroom, try to exploit that a little better. Uh, I like your idea, though, of getting low. The um, out-of-focus foreground elements are not distracting from the shot as much as they were in that lone mushroom shot uh, mainly because everything's lower and not interfering with our vision to the middle of the shot you know very cool shot again the light is very subdued so our colors are muted we have some nice colors uh, in this shot that aren't exploited enough because of the lighting conditions so you know, it doesn't hurt to come in and pull vibrance up a little bit and um, bring saturation up a little bit and even go into the HSL panel and go under the saturation part and maybe even bring green down a little bit but bring the uh, orange and the yellows up and in luminance um, we want to try to minimize our greens and try to bring out the yellows and the oranges. Now I'm just doing it real quick while I'm talking and I'm losing my voice and it looks horrible. But you get the idea what I meant is you want to, there's, there's green is dominating the shot. And because it was so subdued lighting, everything looked, you know, very even and colors were very even. So I think what you want to try to do is bring out these very colorful leaves. And that would have been, um, I think enhance the shot. Uh, focus on this is very good, very very good on this. And this shot again, it's kind of an isolation shot, and it, it's it's very nice. Uh, the, I like this image a lot, except for the focus. Again, it's it's relatively soft. Um, so really get that. Um, I think your main thing, Crystal. You, I like your composition ideas. Ideas. I like the way you go about working the scene. Uh, focus is your issue. I think if you tighten up your focus, you'll bring your photography to another level. This is probably my favorite shot. I really like this shot. Um, focus on this is, is very good. Very good right in here. Uh, very limited depth of field at um, f of 5.6, but it works. We do have this blur here. I don't think is adding to the scene. So in this instance, if you couldn't grab it in camera, I would um, I would crop it something like that. I think that's a much um, more uh, compelling image than the previous one, and we do have all this subtle color that we could see in the shot, and the lighting is is very cool. So this is a very nice shot. I think there's one more. Nope, that's the last one. That's it. I uh, thank you very much, Crystal, for sharing your work with us. Um, very interesting. I think. Really, if you just um, check into those things I mentioned on how to help you focus, I think your photography will go on to another level and keep working the scene. And um, I think you'll really be a really great photographer. Very, You're well on your way. Very nicely done. And I'd like to thank everyone who watches all my videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you have time, go over to my website that article just search for back button focusing I mentioned you'll find that article there's all kinds of photography stuff over there it's all free check out all the resources I have over there and if you have time 
um, go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.